Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. This process began back in Earth's late Devonian. The first harvest to bring life to Chimere included scorpions, which were some of the few organisms to make the land of Chimere their home at this time. Shallow brackish water in the region surrounding the portal was by far the most productive, and this habitat was the highest concentration of life brought through the portal. It seems this productivity, compared with the relatively barren terrestrial habitats at the time, drew scorpions back to the water. Although we associate scorpions with arid environments today, scorpions are, after all, one of the iconic desert fauna, their roots are in aquatic habitats, and the scorpions of the first harvest were not far removed from these roots. While some remained on land, some of the larger scorpions made use of their book lungs as gills to make the best of both worlds, hunting in shallow waters to catch the abundant game without being too close to the aquatic predators like stem tetrapods and placoderms. This world was a fragile one, and the first extinctions were devastating. An arid period wiped out most of the terrestrial organisms in Chimere. This, combined with the extinction of their aquatic predators, seems to have greatly favored the adaptable scorpions, and their full return to an aquatic habitat was highly successful. In a matter of a million years, aquatic scorpions experienced a boom in diversity. Some evolved flukes on their tails and feet for open water propulsion. Others walked along the bottom of aquatic habitats. Others still became elongated and specialized as hunters in the coral reefs which were rapidly spreading, taking over the calcified reefs of indigenous Chimeran magic. Carcinization is the phenomenon of crustaceans taking on a crab-like body plan, with a wider shell than it is long, and abdomen partially if not fully obscured from the top view. This body plan is very agile and efficient at the expense of speed and forward hydrodynamics. This has independently evolved in at least five lineages of crustaceans in Earth's history. It has also evolved independently in several Chimeran crustacean lineages. While not crustaceans, two clades of marine scorpion have also followed the trends of carcinization. Tank crabs are generally large. They are incredibly dense thanks to a thick carapace. The largest tank crabs in modern Chimere can weigh several hundred pounds and are among the top scavengers and ambush predators of reef habitats. Their stinger is straight, heavily calcified, and thrusts into prey from beneath, although they are often will simply tear into game rather than taking the time to position it for a sting. Smaller but more abundant are the crab scorpions. Their lineage is quite ancient, and they were crabs before any animals we call crabs were harvested. True and spider crabs have outcompeted them in large part to reproductive differences. Scorpions are K-selected, having fewer lung that they give live birth to and care for over a period of several months to even years. This means that a lot more of the scorpion young will reach adulthood, but crustaceans have a significant numeric advantage, with each female laying millions of eggs each season. Over time, this has generally favored crustacean crabs, although crab scorpions have held their own in specialized niches. The trident scorpion is quite common throughout the known world. It is a giver and taker of life in the folklore of many Chimeran peoples, and is often used as the archetypical species in this overall clade of aquatic scorpions. They are very proficient swimmers, with powerful dorsal and ventral muscles powering their fluked tails. Their last set of legs act as both rudder and speed supplement. Most of their lives are spent in the inland sea hunting and scavenging. They need to be in cold water to molt, and will often migrate to the strait between Picardia and the shallow sea, so that the cold summer currents will facilitate shedding, and there will be an abundance of prey brought by cold upwells to rapidly bulk up before their new hardened carapace forms. They are quite vulnerable this time, but often predators would rather hunt the bounty of confused fish thrown north by upwells rather than bothering with an especially irritable and venomous scorpion. Most adult trident scorpions only molt every two or three years, typically alternating with their season of mating. 
Trident scorpions are monogamous, and partners will remain together for mating until their young are at least about a year old. Courtship and mating occurs in the inland sea, often shortly after their molt is complete. They usually seek a freshwater habitat and go upriver. When they find a suitable place, usually a flowing river with a still portion nearby, the female will give birth to around a dozen offspring. The male will mostly defend the inlet and hunt, although they do alternate roles from time to time. Both parents are especially territorial and aggressive at this time. After around six months, once the young are able to fend for themselves and have completed their first molt, the family typically begins to move downstream. They will often remain together for another few months in the inland sea, although some family units break up as soon as they reach saltwater. Each individual has a lot of bulking up to do in preparation for the next molt, to mate again, or simply to grow. In some instances, young scorpions choose to remain in freshwater habitat for a few years, molting and growing there instead, although this is mostly done in colder waters and they must still travel out to saline waters after molting to calcify their new shells. The largest arthropod ever to evolve on Chimere or Earth is the Inquilatura. These colossal relatives of trident scorpions can often reach 15 feet in length as mature adults, although 20-foot specimens are well documented in colder and southern waters, and there are rumors of 30-foot leviathans in the oceans near Kaishel. They are filter feeders, using long barbed filaments on their pincers and legs to grab plankton, and combs on their shellicery to process their catch. These shells feature a wide range of bioluminescent glows. The pattern on these marks are unique to each individual. Although used to lure prey, these markers give the Enquilatur its name, which means Peace of the Midnight Sky in the language of Eskadine peoples, and is said to reference a legend of the shooting stars being scorpions falling out of the sky and crashing into the sea. At night, when cold waters rise, Many Kalian sailors are treated to the spectacle of the ocean sky as millions of bioluminescent plankton rise from the depths and are fed upon by these massive silhouettes lit up by stars. Cheers to Paleo Curiosities for hosting Big Bug Week! A lot of other paleo and speculative biology creators are making some really cool content, and I suggest you all check out the tag Big Bug Week to see some really neat pieces and discussions. Thank you all for watching. Stay fantastic, everyone. Cheers, folks!